Hi, I'm Ray from the Radio Workshop. Call sign is G4NSJ. Most of my videos are about vintage valve radios such as this, the Bush DAC90A. Um, but just recently I've been adding one or two amateur radio related videos because I'm finding that uh, quite a few people that want to restore vintage valve radios also want to become radio amateurs or are radio amateurs or people who are restoring these want to become amateurs if you see what I mean so it's, it's all related that's why you'll find that uh, you know there's one or two videos about aerials uh, on my website um, other bits of bits and pieces related to amateur radio and this one moving that aside this is something I knocked up years ago it's really battered now it was only a not, not a prototype really it was a lash up in the first place it's to read RF current so you've got your transmitter you've got your aerial wire going up this is for like a, uh, end fed wires random lengths of wires uh, from your ATU you, your aerial goes up to wherever trees poles and what you do you just just cut your aerial wire put one in there one out of there and this reads aerial current um, now there are that on the side by the way is a little sort of sensitivity control so if the meter goes hard around the stop you can you know, turn it down a bit there um, there are RF ammeters around called thermocouple meters um, there's a picture of one on the screen here I'll show you that now look what these do there's a, a there are two dissimilar metals inside um, and they're, they're sort of stuck together these two different metals with a little coil of wire wrapped around them now that that coil of wire the aerial that's in series with your aerial when you connect it up to the meter that little coil of wire gets hot it eats this uh, little metal strip these two dissimilar metals and what happens you get a voltage developed across the junction of these two metals and that little voltage that very small voltage makes the meter read um, they're great little uh, meters. They were used a lot in the 30s. Uh, I think they're still used today in some cases. Um, but they're a little bit slow to read. They're expensive now to buy. They're a little bit slow to read because you've got to heat the metal up and then let it cool down. So as you're tuning up your transmitter, um, you know, it, there is a bit of time delay on the movement of the meter. This is a photo of the, the one I knocked up literally knocked up slung together this is I'll show you inside in a minute there's actually nothing to it so it's a nice little project to to build um, so that's that that's the inside uh, the close-up of it rather the meter is um, one milliamp full scale forget the readings but that's that's irrelevant um, this won't read SWR by the way this will only read aerial current or right, RF current uh, and it's not calibrated uh, I use this purely as an indicator right so w why do we need to do this uh, you know why not use an SWR meter um, the reason I knocked this up in the first place as I say many many years if not decades ago is because uh, the, I, the SWR meter I had was a CB type which is great for 27 megs most of the amateur bands it's fine just for your full scale to, you know, your forward reading uh, nulling down one to one SWR as you, you tune your ATU it's fine I found on 80 meters it wasn't very good and on top band 160 meter amateur band it was hopeless there wasn't enough coupling and I, I couldn't get a full scale reading you know on the forward reading I couldn't get it full scale at all so I've since built my own SWR meter which is it's great it works very well on top band so what I did it's a bit of a long story there was a top band contest coming along and I wanted to join in and I had no way of tuning up the aerial on top band so I knocked this up right so you don't only have to use this on top band it, it'll work on all amateur bands um, and it's just as I've said it's a good indication of of RF current it's great to use with the L match ATU I described in another video as I say if you're using just a random length of wire um, 
just put the wire, doesn't matter which way round it goes on the terminals, uh, just load, basically tune for maximum smoke, maximum reading on the meter. Um, and uh, you know, then you know that you're, you're totally tuned up. So yeah, quite good, quite good for all sorts of random lengths of wire. Okay, let's have a look inside now. You can see what I mean now by lash up. It's uh, literally it's just hanging in there. Um, right, that's that uh, toroid, that ferrite ring at the top there. You can see the turns of copper wire around there, shellac covered copper wire. Um, and you can see just about the, uh, the thick wire from one terminal to the other just goes through the centre of the ring, the ferrite ring. You want an HF type toroid really. I mean, I don't know what ferrite ring. I got a box full of them at the time and I just took one out and tried it and it worked. Um, the number of turns, you know, the thinner copper wire, the number of turns there, uh, experiment with that. It depends on the power you're running and it depends on the sensitivity of your meter, uh, depends on the ferrite ring you're using. Um, as I say, I, I just grabbed one from the box and it worked. So, and you can also see the pot I put on there too, for the sort of sensitivity control. That's just in series with the meter. Um, show you the circuit in a minute. So that's the inside of it. As you can see, there's nothing to it at all. Uh, very simple. Very simple, but works extremely well. Okay, this is the circuit diagram. Um, very basic. I mean, really, as I've said all along, this is a lash up. This is, this is the way I built it. I intended, uh, I still intend one day to uh, get a decent box to put it in. Use this meter. I like the meter because it's nice and big. Uh, I don't have to change glasses to read the meter <laughs> or to see the needle going up and down. Um, really in this circuit, I mean there, there are dozens of circuits all over the internet for this sort of thing. Uh, you want some decoupling capacitors just in case you get RF on the meter, you know, you don't want to burn the meter out. I mean I've never had trouble. Uh, I've left this meter in line, I left it in line for years. I've only taken it out now just to show you. Uh, it's been in line for years, uh, never any trouble, but really you want to uh, decoupling capacitors for the the meter get the RF off it and that uh, other little refinements like that but this is the basic circuit the diode you couldn't actually see it on the photo of the inside of the the unit uh, but it's just a little a little signal diode I forget what that is just something I found in uh, in one of my sort of drawers boxes of junk at the time just grabbed a, di a diode and it worked as I said you know, experiment with it so that's what it is. Uh, there's the circuit. Now you can see the way it works is um, the, the sort of the toroid with the aerial wire going through the centre of it. Uh, the aerial is the primary. The, the coils of wire around the toroid. That's the secondary. It's just a transformer. It's a current transformer. And uh, what you're doing is rectifying that with the diode. So that's all it is. On the view uh, inside the box, you couldn't see the diode. You couldn't see the little capacitor either. Um, I've forgotten that. There's a little capacitor. I think it's an 01.01 something like that. I can't remember. Doesn't matter as I say experiment with it uh, or have a look around the internet. There are loads of circuits but uh, certainly worth knocking up something like this. Um, certainly is worth it. Um, what you might find depends on the length of your sort of random length of your piece of wire, your aerial. What I found was on 40 meters uh, my aerial, I haven't got it anymore, it's an old aerial, uh, it was half wavelength long on 40 metres, not a dipole, the same, same length as a half wave dipole, but end fed, one piece of wire. Up to 66 feet, is it? 40 metres, I think. Yeah, so it's a half wavelength long on 40 metres. And this didn't read much, not much of a reading at all. Now why is that? It's because the aerial is what we call voltage fed. So 40 metres, half wavelength long is 20 metres, about 66 feet. If you feed that aerial at the end, it's all voltage there. The, the current, you've got the aerial here, the current is maximum in the centre and nothing at each end. And the voltage is maximum at the end, nothing in the centre, maximum that end. Um, so half wave aerial on 40 metres, 66 feet long, 
have this in series with that bit of wire and you won't get much of a reading. You get a little bit because it's not going to be exact to half, in half wave. On 80 meters that aerial is only a quarter wave. Okay so half of 80 is 40, half of that is 20. So that the 20 feet, sorry 20 meters of wire which is a half wave on 40 meters is only a quarter wave length long on 80 meters and with a quarter wave it's all current at the feed point so this is going to read you know, maximum use your sensitivity control there to t I never did even put a knob on that ah <laughs> dreadful what a way to carry on yeah so as I say experiment with it I mean the chances of your piece of wire random length being exactly a half wave on one of the amateur bands well okay it could happen so what I'm saying is don't worry if you don't get much of a reading on one or, or two amateur bands um, it's just that your voltage rather than current feeding the aerial on that particular band. Um, so that's it. What else is there to say about it? Not a lot really. Not a lot. Nice little piece of kit. So uh, hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Um, as I said there are going to be one or two more amateur radio related videos as well. Of course, I mean in the main I, I'm dealing with restoring, repairing and restoring vintage valve radios but um, I am bringing some amateur radio stuff into that as well. Anyway, hope you enjoy watching it and look out for my uh, videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.